boarding life was certainly exciting, but tell us a little bit about the mundane things though. Like what time you had to wake up in the morning, what were the things that boarders okay. had to do. Because as a day girl, I was always fascinated mm -hmm. with how you had this strict regime, which yeah. seemed to have been able to make you girls all excel. I mean, you seem to have your prep time and your, you know. Tell us about that. Yes, well, the, ri the, wa the rising bell went at 6.30 in the morning and those who were scheduled to have a bath then would, would, would have a bath. The rest of us would stay in the bed and then when the warning bell went for you to get downstairs for breakfast, that is when we would fly up, haul the spread up over the, the bed. Nothing was, was pulled too tight or straight. Uh, jump into the clothes, have the brush through the hair and then you would go down the steps to, to breakfast because the, the dining room was on the on the ground, ground floor. Ground right. floor. Which is now and the, the office. Uh -huh. Right, and we would we would sit in house in houses. Okay. Um they, they, so they, you were the in little what ones house? I was in Darling. Right. Grace Darling. Mm -hmm. The the little ones um sat at a, a table together mm -hmm. and then the rest sat at these these house tables. Mm -hmm. Darling Anderson Cavell and John Abark, Abark, right, yeah. in those days. Right, and um, the <laughs> there was a time when the bread plate would come in, right, piled high with buttered bread, and we had things like, um, things out of tins for breakfast, sardines and sausages, we had a lovely thing called prim and it has totally disappeared i think it, it it's a it's like a, a cold pork meat. yeah a, a pork kind of thing which was they would like slice spam, it maybe. and warm it like yeah. very much like spam but tastier much tastier we'd mm -hmm. love that mm -hmm. and um, so you spread that on the bread. eggs we hated mm -hmm. because they would be oily and you'd fry them or, or you could, if you are special, you could get a boy then. But back to the bread plate. Bread plate used to come in and you'd help yourself when the bread was over. You sent out the plate and it was filled again. And well, at that time we had a handyman, gardener, um, custodian called Sam. Yes, I've heard And of that. Sam had a donkey cart. And we all fell in love with the donkey. Why did he have this cart? From time to time, he would have to go to collect groceries, hardware, haberdashery, all of this kind of thing. And he also, those students who came from the country and came in on the diesel or the train, um, he would have to go down to the railway station and collect their luggage, right, and, and, and bring it up to school. We fell in love with the donkey and so we used to, in those days we wore the Dubonnet tunic, tunic and white blouses. So we would pull away the top of the tunic and fill it with bread. Now you had to turn the buttered side of the bread towards your body because you couldn't have this grease showing through on the blouse. And we would go around to the back of the building and feed Sam's donkey with the bread. Well, somebody, I don't think they caught on that it was going to the donkey, but they couldn't understand why these children were eating so much bread. So what they did is, we started one term when we went back, there were these little plates. We all got our bread plates with three slices of bread and it was set at your place on the table. So. Um, that was the that, end of that. That was the end of that. Well, we, we found there was time after breakfast that we would do all kinds of things because we didn't go into the classroom for the register to be marked until 8 o'clock when the, the bell went. So we would do things like after we no longer had Sam's donkey to deal with, we would go and collect water grass and feed the guinea pigs and the rabbits that were there, 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 there to be used in the lab. Mm -hmm. Lab for mm -hmm. dissection and, mm -hmm. and all of this kind of thing. Um, I don't
don't know where they got the frogs from because we had nothing to do with the frogs. And I absolutely refused to dissect the frog. It would have to have been done and pinned out and then we would have to draw diagrams and, and all of that kind of thing. So we found things to do that were, were interesting. So um, after, after school, I believe you had, you know, you went off and had some lunch, was it? Before you had prep time, how did yes, that go? Yes, we had, we had, look, we, classes used to end at one fifteen, and we went to lunch at one thirty. Mm -hmm. Was this a cooked lunch at that time? That was, that was a cooked lunch, right. yes. We used to have a cooked lunch, and then we'd have supper, which was usually bread and peanut butter, some kind of jelly, um, uh, cheese spread, that kind of thing, a, a lighter meal. Mm -hmm. But we always had to have this hot cocoa and, and that sort of thing, which I hated. The other thing that I could not stomach was um, porridge. In the morning. And, and I suffered with constipation as a child, so my mother came in and brought cereal, all brown and that sort of thing, and had a hell of a discussion with Miss, Miss Gartshore, who thought that she, did, she didn't think that I should be getting any kind of special treatment. So mommy got the doctor to write out a certificate to say that I had to have. In those days, it was known as roughage. It wasn't fiber. <laughs> roughage. Ruffage. I had to have roughage. Mm. So that, that is how I got out of the porridge. Can you imagine cream of wheat and this thick old porridge when you took it off the spoon and it, so it went splat. It was just so thick. Horrible. Um, and so, after so we went to, to lunch mm -hmm. and then that was a heavy meal of the day right. and after then, that we had to go to the dormitory for rest okay. period. How long would that be like? Um, until we got up at a 20 to 3 and we went to the prep rooms that which were from the, the middle, from the middle landing yeah. all the way down to the end of okay. the room. So it, had the, it went little ones, then little bigger ones, and so right. on, and the six bombers were at the, at at the, the end, end, end yes, of that. Yes. Just before you turn to go into the geography Tom, room. Yes, that's, which that's is the bottom where, landing. That's right. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that went three until four, I think it was. Because after that, after after that we had time to games yes. and your, your personal play, right. you know, if you didn't have, because different too. games were, were scheduled on different days yes, and so yes. on. I played hockey. Yes, I remember that. And I started um, netball and ended up with a finger that was bent. So I gave it up and, and that one, that this was netball and I gave it up after that. In, in, during the flow of the day when we had Fizzed. Um we would play rounders, mm -hmm. we would do gymnastics on the horses and, and all of that sort of thing and spring jumps. Right. And when we got into fifth form, then we had Doris Rumsey who had a dance school would come and teach us um, ballroom dancing and to do the cha-cha and waltzes and so oh, on. Yes. But after a while, some of the teachers objected to the whole thing because, you know, when you're doing ballroom dance, one hip has to be pressed against the, the partner, partner's hip. So it lasted for about a year and a half and then they disposed of that. But didn't you do dancing on your own? Didn't you have to leave school? I remember you leaving school yes, in the I afternoon did. to go and do dancing yes, outside. I did, I did ballet and... Um, I was at Barbara Fonseca's School of Ballet. I Where think. was that? In Harper Tree? No, it was all the way down. At first it was at the... Um, she was married to the head of... Major Kame, who was the head of the... Um, what is that thing that, that boys, boys do? Cadet. He was okay. head of the Cadet Corps. Mm -hmm. And so, so she was married, Africa? yeah, um, but it was, the entrance was where that building became the gun court. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. And, so that was quite um, So the entrance was on South Camp Road. Right. Well, I would go down on the bus and then my brother or my father would pick me up or one of the parents of the other children and bring me back, pad me up to, to school. So was that link with dance that really um, pulled you in the direction of the NDTC and your... Yes, because I'd, I'd had that long experience because I did... We only ever went up to grade five, which and that involved point work and character work I used to do. Um, you used to deal with uh, Spanish character dances and okay. that sort of thing as you mm -hmm. moved up the grades. Mm -hmm. So and you I were at that time you would have been about 16, 17? No man, that Not was, yet. I was in fourth, fourth so form, that would be grade ten, grade ten. Okay, yeah, and so on. Yeah. And I also, although there were four piano teachers on the campus, my mother insisted that I continue with Miss Ina Helps. So I went all the way up um, and she was on the corner of Central Avenue and, and Halfway Tree Road. So okay. I, would, I would, you know, you had to go on a Friday afternoon to get your pocket money at the office oh. and so on. So I would always ask for bus fare to go to dance and, and to go to Miss Helps. Yeah, yeah. But I would walk down to Miss Helps and the the bus fare would buy round trees, fruit gum or, <laughs> or fruit pastilles or something yes. like that. And if Miss Helps let me go early, I was within walking distance of my house, I would go home and, and get goodies and then head back to school, you know. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. was interesting. Okay, so we'll now take another break and come back, talk about your career, wonderful career. <laughs>